Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, on demand via the Bloomberg Business app, free for iPhone and Android devices. So under the UK plan, the status of British national overseas passport holders will be upgraded to offer them a path to citizenship. BNO passports are held by some 350,000 people in Hong Kong with a further 2.5 million people eligible for them. Well, let's pick up on that story with Fadi Fahad, who's Senior Legal Officer at the Immigration Solicitors called Benkian and Donian. Uh, Fadi, welcome to the programme. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Uh, first of all, just give us the detail. What is it exactly that a, U- an, a Hong Kong citizen could expect from the UK? What's the UK offering? Good morning, uh, and thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Um, in terms of the announcement yesterday by Dominic Raab, Um, That itself um, actually has a a slight uh, sort of variation from the announcement that was made by him on the 2nd of June. So on the 2nd of June, uh, the UK government envisaged a 12-month extendable visa. Mm -hmm. That was the initial proposal um, on the 2nd of June. It was a 12-month extendable period of leave with a pathway to citizenship. What we heard about yesterday was a slightly different path, which... uh, is now a five years path allowing people with BNO status in Hong Kong to come to the UK for work and study, um, and they can bring their dependents, which usually is a, is, a, is a spouse or a partner or children, and they will then, after five years, be entitled to settle and then obtain British citizenship thereafter. From what was said yesterday, the flavour of what's been uh, proposed to me resembles almost the existing. UK ancestry route that we currently have in UK. Mm. Um, we don't yet have the meat on the bones, of course, but from what's been said, it seems like it will reflect the UK ancestry route, mm-hmm. um, which is quite similar because the UK ancestry route allows an applicant who has a UK connection, uh, usually a UK grandfather or grandparent, yeah. it allows that person to uh, come to the UK for five years and to work and study and provide it the conditions have been fulfilled during that five-year period. The UK ancestry applicant can settle. It seems to be similar, um, but instead of having a UK grandparent, you simply have to have B&O status. Yeah, Um, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's potentially even more people, isn't it? Because, you know, if if it's dependents also, uh, that's quite interesting. Um, Look, your firm handles both basically asylum, human rights cases, but also business immigration. Have you actually seen a lot of interest in this offer or potentially moving to the UK from Hong Kong residents, BNO passport holders? Uh, certainly, yes. There's been a, a spike in, in the inquiries that we've received. Uh, certainly um, uh, emails, lots of emails uh, for generic information to the extent that we've actually set up a specific email for Hong Kong citizens or uh, mm-hmm. Hong Kong residents. And looking at the context of this, uh, it's estimated that about 2.9 million Hong Kong residents have BNO status, so they've already Mm. got it. But the amount of actual passports in circulation is quite low. In December 2015, there was only about 143,000 passport holders, so people have actually applied for the passports pursuant to their BNO status. That was just in December 2015, 143,000. Now, by 2019, that 143,000 more than doubled to 350,000. So we currently have 350,000 passport holders in circulation. Mm -hmm. So even Hong Kong residents have applied for the passport uh, at an increasing rate in 2019. And in 2019, we've seen the inquiries go up. People have applied for it Mm -hmm. and have been asking questions as to what benefits that particular status has. Yeah. And those who haven't even applied for it are still asking the questions and thinking about it. So, so there's been a lot of uh, inquiries about this. And a so, lot of clear, as you say, there's a lot of interest out there. But what about the suggestion that the Chinese could, in fact, find some way of thwarting this? I mean, legally speaking, can they? Uh, legally, there's, there's plenty of uh, problems, potentially, um, and uh, it, it will be interesting to see how it pans out. I mean, in 1997, even when the handover occurred... Um, Many people forget that the UK actually gave full British citizenship to around 50,000 residents at the time. Uh, And that was uh, 50,000 of the sort of, you know, 
sort of upper class elite uh, professional uh, people with connections. And that at the time infuriated China. So China wasn't impressed back then at just 50,000 people potentially having full British citizenship. Um, and that was a problem then. Of course, back then, uh, Hong Kong's uh, economy was 18% more than the size of the mainland. And now China produces 30 times as many goods and services as Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is not imp- as important economically to China now as it was then. But it did create a problem then. And what we have now is uh, this proposal has been rejected by China. China says that this actual potential uh, policy by the UK government will breach the joint declaration. Um, and it's quite interesting because the joint declaration yeah. says that uh, the Hong Kong, neither party, the so neither party must uh, act in a way which uh, impacts or affects Hong Kong's prosperity and stability. Yeah. China so will that say that... Issue. China will say that this initiative, whereby potentially three million plus people uh, could be uprooted from Hong Kong, does exactly that. It affects Hong Kong's prosperity and stability. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. on London DAB Digital Radio, at 1 a.m. Eastern in New York on 11.30, and on Sirius XM Satellite Radio Channel 119. Copyright 2020, Bloomberg LP.